Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to Faith Tabernacle Church, our YouTube channel, where the just shall live by faith. We are under the leadership of Pastor Debbie Reynolds, and we are located at 45 Neelan, Houston, Texas, 77022. And we would love for you to join us once the doors are open. Amen. But we are so grateful that you have tuned into our YouTube channel. We ask that you just click the little like button and hit subscribe. Uh, so you will always get updated with um, what God is saying, what how God is speaking. Amen. Amen. Within our body and to the masses. Amen. There's always a preceding word and we would love for you to. Amen. Amen. Experience that word with us. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And you are in our Sunday school class. So welcome again. My name is Minister Nicole Allen. Amen. And I'm going to be teaching today on plowing in purpose and on purpose. Plowing in purpose and on purpose. Amen. Um, the last time I was uh, allowed to minister, amen, I was I ministered on doing 2021 in purpose and on purpose. And we said that purpose means a determination, glory to God, amen, an intense, amen, a deliberate action. We said that 2021, we are not going to just haphazardly walk through this year. We are going to be deliberate in our walk with Christ, amen, amen, in the things of God, amen. We are going to go higher and we are going to go further, glory to God, amen. So I pray that you're still holding on to that word, that you are still being deliberate, amen. We're still early in this year, we're still in January, so hopefully that fire hasn't fizzled out yet, glory to God, amen. But we're, today we're going to be talking about plowing in purpose and plowing on purpose. Glory to God. Amen. And I just want to share a quick little story because when you're talking about plowing, you're talking about farming. Glory to God. So this story says that there's, you know, two farmers. There was an older farmer and a young farmer. And the young farmer said, you know, hey, how do you get those rows so perfectly straight? And the older farmer said, it's easy. It's easy. All you have to do is get set your eyes, you know, at a distance and, and get you a focal point. Amen. And put that focal point between the ears of your mule and just go to it. And if you do that, you'll have straight lines. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So the young farmer said, you know, thank you. I'm going to do it when I get home. Amen. So, you know, maybe about a week or so later, the older farmer passed by the young farmer's a field and saw that, hey, all those rows look like rainbows. So he saw him uh, in town in the store and said, hey, you know, what happened to your field? You know, when I passed by, it looked like, you know, it was a bunch of rainbows <laughs> in your field, not straight lines. And the farmer said, well, I did exactly what you told me to do. I got me an object. And he said it was a cow. And he said that, you know, I put that, that, object that cow in between the ears of my mule and I kept walking towards it and the older farmer said well you know he laughed he said well you know the cow was grazing so you know although you have the cow as your focal point he was moving while he was eating he said no you have to put your you got to get an object like a mountain you know the tip of the mountain you have to get a man glory to God a man uh um uh, uh, a fence, something that's not going to move, amen, and, and, and use that as your guide. So I'm telling you, in 2021, we are going to keep our focus, our eyes fixed on Jesus, glory to God, amen. We are not going to allow, you know, uh, different things to take our attention. We're going to fix our eyes on Jesus, glory to God, amen. And I want us to go ahead and go to our scripture. It is in Luke, and I know you got your Bibles because this is Sunday school. So we we said we're going to do it on purpose. We're doing this on purpose. We're not just going to, you know, be babies and be fed. No, we're going to feed ourselves. Glory to God. So turn with me to Luke, the ninth chapter, verse 57 through 62. That's Luke, the ninth chapter. 
verse 57 through 62, and it reads, And it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee wheresoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the son of man hath not where to lay his head. And he said unto another, follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Jesus said unto him, let the dead bury their dead. But go thou and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee. But let me first go bid them farewell, which are at my home, at my house. And Jesus said unto him, no man having put his hand to the plow, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Amen. And our focal point is going to come out of verse 62. But in verse 57 through 61, listen. In 2021, amen, we are not going to postpone following Jesus. We're not. We're not going to do it. We're not going to do it. We're not going to say, Lord, I'm going to follow you, you know. After this, after that, you know, whatever your excuse is, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to follow you for real after this. And a lot of people say that, you know, I'm going to come to church once I get right. Well, you can't never get right. You need, you need the word of God to get you right. So don't allow the enemy to trick you to postpone following Jesus. Amen. This year in 2021, say, I am not making any excuses. This is what the, these disciples were saying. You know, I, they were making excuses. Glory to God. They were making excuses. We're not making excuses in 2021. We're not going to do it. Glory to God. Amen. So many things are pulling for our attention, pulling us away. Glory to God. Amen. It's urgent things that are pulling for our attention. There's tragic things that are pulling for our attention. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. There's Comforts of this world that are pulling for our attention. Amen. Amen. But this year, because I said we're it's a deliberate year, we're doing things on purpose. Amen. We are not going to allow. Amen. Amen. Uh, because when Jesus said, Hey, I don't have anywhere to lay my head, we're not gonna allow comfort to stop us or the lack thereof. Because Jesus said, Listen, when you follow me, it ain't gonna be all easy like you think it is. He said, listen, I'm, I'm from here to there to everywhere. Amen. We have to, amen, resolve that in our spirit that being a disciple is not always comfortable. It's not always luxury. Amen. 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 The other two start saying, hey, I got to go bury the dead. I got to go bury my dad. I got to go see who's at my house and say bye to everybody. Listen, there is such an urgency that that uh, Jesus is trying to uh, uh, communicate in this passage. There is an urgency that outweighs what you think is important. That outweighs what you think is urgent. Uh, he's saying, no, you got to follow me. There's a work to be done. That other stuff, leave that. So this year, we are not making excuses. We are not going to say, oh, the reason why I can't, you fill in the blank. The reason why I won't, you fill in the blank. The reason why I, 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 I would have, but... You fill in the blank. Sometimes, you know, we used to go out and witness and, you know, it'd be hot outside. <laughs> so somebody didn't come because it was hot outside. But this year, we're not making any excuses. Glory to God. Amen. We're not going to allow anything to take our eyes off of Jesus. We're not going to any allow anything, amen, to take our focus. Our eyes are going to be fixed on Jesus. These disciples' eyes were not fixed on Jesus, just like that young farmer. His eyes weren't fixed on the stationary. And the Bible says that God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He does not change. People change. Situations change. 
you know, everything, this world changes, but God remains the same. Christ is the same. We are going to keep our eyes fixed on Christ. We are not going to allow anything to cause us to say, oh, the reason why my row is crooked, it looked like a rainbow is because whatever it is, fill in the blank. Amen. Another thing, we're not going to fix our eyes on past failures. Glory to God. Oh, before we even get to past failures, look at 2 Timothy uh, chapter 4, verse 10. Glory to God. Because we want to make straight roads. Amen. We want to amen, walk that, that narrow path and make a straight road. Amen. Let's look at 2 Timothy 4 and 10. It says, for demons have, lo- have forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, Cretans to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. Amen. Listen to me. In 2021, we are not going to allow the love of this world to overshadow our love for Christ. Amen. Listen, we know that in Jeremiah 29 and 11, it says, for I know the thoughts that I have for you, for I know the plans that I have for you, you know, to, to not to harm you, to give you an expected end. Amen. God can have and does have a purpose and a plan for all of us. But we can say, you know what? I love the world more. We can say, you know what? I love this man more, this woman more, these things more. We are not going to allow this world, the love of this world to Uh, cause us to cancel out the assignment and the purpose that God has placed on our life. Amen. Glory to God. Because when you start looking at this world and it has a lot to offer, but we are not going to fix our eyes on this world. We're not going to just zone out on this world and say, oh, I wish this, I wish that, I wish this. No, no, no. We're going to keep our eyes Looking to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Glory to God. Amen. And like I was going to say, you know, we're not going to fix our eyes on past failures. Amen. You know, a lot of times uh, we do things, have done things, you know, before we knew Christ, while we're in Christ, that causes us to be to to not move forward. Because we're always rehearsing this thing that we've done, you know, these past failures, you know, but don't allow, amen, what you've done, amen, to stop your um, work for God. When you think about it, I thought about Moses. Moses, the one that came to my mind, Moses killed a man and buried him with his own hands. To me, that is such, I mean, that is such a lot to me. Amen. You know, a lot of times you say, you know, you, you know, I would never do this. You don't know what you would do and you don't know how those things will affect you. But when someone said, you know, when somebody called him out on it, he said, what are you going to do? Kill me like you killed that Egyptian, you know, and Moses fled. Just think about if Moses would have allowed, you know, the failure that he experienced in his life. To say, no, I'm not worthy to be used by God. I'm not fit to be used by God. You know, we wouldn't know about, you know, this awesome leader and how God can develop you and how God can redeem you. You know, don't let, you know, your past failures, amen, 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 cause you not to do the will of God. Amen. To to cause you to take your your focus off of off of God. Amen. The Bible says for us to forget those things which are behind us. Forget them. Put it behind you and press forward. Press forward. This is the year we're pressing forward and we're going up. We're going forward and we're going up purposely. Glory to God. Glory to God. So, amen. We are plowing in purpose and on purpose. Amen. So ask yourself. Am I, amen, looking back? Amen, amen. Am I really committed to Jesus? Am I really committed to Jesus? I'm not talking to the sinners. I'm not talking to those that don't know God. I'm talking about the ones that say, for Christ I live and for Christ I die. Uh, You know, he paid a price. He redeemed me. 
He bought me. I'm now I'm no longer my own. Amen. Am I really committed to Jesus? Take a second. Take a second. Amen. Because in this scripture, the one that we're focusing on, the one that says, and Jesus said unto him, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Amen. Jesus teaches us that. Amen. Amen. The only kind of person that's fit for the kingdom of God is one that puts his hand to the plow and doesn't look back. Amen. And this, this doesn't exempt anyone. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. It doesn't matter if you are an apostle. It doesn't matter if you are a bishop. It doesn't matter if you are a Sunday school teacher. It doesn't matter if you are the minister of music, the deacon, the evangelist, the missionary, the praise and worship leader, the praise team, the choir, the lay member, the ushers. I think I covered everybody. The committees. It doesn't matter. If you put your hand to the plow and look back, you're not fit for the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Being a Christian. Amen. Being a follower of Christ. We have to understand that we are called to the service of God. To God's service. Amen. We are called to serve God. Amen. Amen. And we are to serve him with all of our might, all of our strength, all of our heart, all of our, amen, 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 soul, all of our mind. This is how we to serve him. Amen. Amen. And the thing is, it's a choice. It is a choice. Amen. The Bible says that it doesn't, it does not say, choose you this life, who you're going to serve. Choose you this uh, year, who you're going to serve. It said, choose you this day. Choose you this day because every day, every day, it doesn't matter if you've been in Christ one day or one million days. Every day is a choice to serve God. Amen. Amen. So choose you this day who you are going to serve. Amen. Being a member of my church, Faith Tabernacle Church, probably one of the best churches in the world, does not make you a Christian. Amen. Being a member of your church doesn't make you a Christian. Listen, uh, watching Christian television doesn't make you a Christian. Listening to gospel music and Christian music doesn't make you a Christian. Glory to God. Amen. You can show that you're a Christian by putting your hands to the plow. Amen. Amen. It is, amen, an active life for God, a daily life. A, you know, living your life daily for God. Amen. Amen. It's a person that makes a decision that they're going to follow Christ. Amen. They're going to be, co- they're going to live a committed life to God and plow his field. You know, do God's service and plow the field. This is how you know you're a Christian. Glory to God. Listen. Amen. 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 Putting your hands to the plow requires skill. It requires skill. Amen. We need to learn how to plow. Just like we needed to learn how to serve God. We didn't know how to serve God. We got to learn how to serve God. You can't serve God any kind of way. And you can't plow any kind of way. Glory to God. Amen. So how do we plow? You plow by studying the word of God. You plow by, amen, 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 praying. You you plow by meditating on the word. You plow by attending to the word. We're not just hearers only, but we are doers. Amen. Because we want to be effective. Effective. We want to serve effectively. That's how we plow. That's how I plow. That's how you plow. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. When you look at first Kings in chapter 19, verse 19, the Bible talks about Elisha and how he was plowing behind 12 pair of oxen. Amen. Amen. Listen, we don't have the strength to pull the plow. Amen. Our job is to guide it. We don't have the strength to pull the plow, but our job is to guide it. Amen. Because the Bible says it is not by might, that is not by power, but it's by the spirit of God. Amen. God will provide the power. Amen. Amen. It's our responsibility to guide that plow in the right direction. Amen. Amen. And it's because I'm reading God's word. I am meditating on God's word. I'm praying God's word. Amen. I'm doing God's word. Amen. I'm being 
It's causing me to be led by the spirit of God. Therefore, I'm guiding my life. I'm guiding my thoughts. I'm guiding my soul. Amen. In the direction of holiness, in the direction of righteousness, in the direction of integrity, in the direction of truth. Glory to God. Amen. 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 I'm allowing the power of God to lead me. And this is what we need in this hour. We need to be led by the spirit of God. The Bible says those that are led by the spirit of God are the sons of God. And we are claiming that we are the sons of God. We have to be led by the spirit of God. We need the power of God in our lives. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. And a plow, a plow is just a a large agricultural tool. Amen. That, amen, has two poles. Amen. One pole goes over the back of the animal and another one goes into the ground and it has a hook or a blade on it. Amen. Amen. And it digs into the earth. Glory to God. It kind of looked like this. I don't have I don't have a plow for you, but this is my re- you know, my reenacting, reenactment of a plow. So this goes over the back of the animal. And this, amen, is the part that digs into the ground. This this is like the blade down here. It crosses over like this. And it, amen, it looks like a cross. It looks like a cross, amen. It's a picture that shows us that when we put our hand to the plow, amen, we have that cross, amen, ever before us. Glory to God, amen, amen. And it reminds us, amen, amen, that it's not my will, but it's God's will for my life. That my life, I have to live a sacrificial life. Glory to God, amen, glory to God. Look at Matthew 16, verse 24. That's Matthew 16, verse 24. And it says, Then then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Amen. Listen, when we, that plow, we look at that plow, listen, it's it's a, a denying of self. It's a denying of self. It is. It is a constant prayer. It is, Lord, let your will be done in my life. Lord, not my will, not my will, not my will, because my will always wants to detour me. My will always wants to override the will of God. That's why I have to say, Lord, not my will, your will be done. Lord, my life is not my own. I've been bought with a price. Glory to God. You you paid the price for me. Amen. I got to pick up my cross, deny myself and follow after you. Let let me be led by your spirit. Let me follow after you. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. And that that plow represents that life. This is a it's symbolic of uh, forever sacrificial life, not just part time. But it's forever. As long as I'm breathing, my life is going to be a sacrifice for Christ. Glory to God. Amen. So what does a plow do? Amen. A plow turns the ground over. It breaks up that ground. Amen. It causes that hard place to be uh, 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 pliable. It causes it to be softened. Glory to God. Amen. The Bible says to break up that fallow ground. A plow also, amen, amen, destroys weeds and insects. So as it's plowing, as that, remember, remember I plow. As it's going through, this part is digging up the earth. It's breaking up that earth. Glory to God. Amen. It's it's causing the insects. It's causing the weeds to be destroyed. Glory to God. It's preparing the soil. Glory to God. It's preparing that ground. It's preparing that field. And you might ask me, well, what's the ground? I know, you know, how do I plow you? We already said, we read our word, we meditate, we do it. You know, you know. What does the plow do? We know that it breaks up the ground. Well, what ground are we talking about? Amen. The ground is twofold. Glory to God. Amen. Turn with me in Matthew, the 13th chapter, verse 38. Matthew 13 and 38. It says, the field is the world. So the field is the world. It says, the good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. But I want you to focus on when I said, what's the ground? What are we plowing up the ground? One ground, the world, the field is the world. This is where we plowing up. 
This is what we're preparing. This is what we're breaking up. Glory to God. But the, the, the ground also represents our heart. Amen. Amen. And some, some of you may be familiar with the parable about the sower. Amen. If you turn, you don't have to read this right now, but in your own study time, when you're plowing, read Matthew, the 13th chapter, verse 18 through 23, or Mark, the fourth chapter, verse 13 through 20. And it talks about the different types of ground, the different types of heart you can have. And it talks about, amen, that wayside ground. Amen. Meaning that the the enemy stole the seed of the word. So as the the word is being sown in your heart, if it's a man wayside ground, amen, amen. The seed doesn't take root because it's stolen. It's stolen by the enemy. Glory to God. That's in your heart. Amen. Your heart can be a man stony ground. Meaning when the seed of the word is going forth, amen, that that seed never takes root because of tribulation for the sake of the gospel. Amen. Because of persecution and a, a affliction and a offense. These cause, amen, that seed that was planted not to ever take root because of what you're going through. Amen. Glory to God. It talks about thorny ground, talking about the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches. Amen. And the lust of other things. It chokes that word out. So even though the seed of the word is going forth, but because my heart hasn't been plowed and it's thorny, now, you know, I I care more about, amen, amen, making money than the work of the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. That's why it says that the deceitfulness of riches, because you know what? Somebody can come to God and God can bless them with a job. And next thing you know, they don't even come to church no more. You don't even see them no more. It's because they are being deceived by riches. So initially, God was their source. But now, because they got a couple coins in the bank, now, you know, their their, uh, affection, their love, Amen. Has caused that word to be choked out. That love for that money, that deceitfulness of riches is now is telling, you know, though that job is making you think that that's your source. Come on. It's, it's a lot of people out there when it says, choose you this day, who you going to serve? And your job says, hey, serve me. And God says, serve me. The deceitfulness of riches is choking out the word in a lot of God's, uh, in the hearts of God's people. Amen. Glory to God. But it also talks about good ground. Glory to God. And good ground. Amen. That heart that's been plowed up. Amen. Good ground is, you know, those that can hear the word, understand the word and bring forth fruit. The Bible says some 30 fold, some 60 fold and some 100 fold. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And this is the type of ground we want to be. Amen. This is the type of ground we want to be. We want to keep our heart always turned up, always turned over, glory to God, so that seed of the word can bring forth fruit, amen, so that, amen, when, amen, you know, those weeds try to choke out that word, try to make me think that my job is my source, or my man is my source, or my woman is my source, you know, I'm, because I'm plowing, because I'm plowing my own heart, I'm plowing with the, you know, with the word of God. Amen. It it destroys those weeds. It's not allowing those insects to to just nip at that word. You know, the Bible says that, you know, Satan desire to sift you. It's like, you know, just a little piece of you. Peace here, peace there, peace there. No, because I'm plowing, I'm ever before God. Amen. I'm allowing the spirit of God to lead and direct me. Amen. Amen. It's, it's killing out and it's destroying those insects that's trying to infiltrate my good ground. Glory to God. Amen. 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 How do we plow? Amen. We put the plow, which means the cross, amen, in the ground and we allow the power of God to pull it. Amen. And then the soil is turned over and everything is turned upside down. Glory to God. Look at look at Acts, the 17th chapter, verse six. It says, 
And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. Glory to God. Amen. When we live that kind of life that God has called us to live, amen, and we make a mark on the world, amen, because our our lives are cross-centered, amen, 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 we begin to turn everything upside down. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. I know this to be true in my own life. Glory to God. God turned my life upside down. Glory to God. Amen. And it was because, amen, amen, a disciple or his disciples, it was more than one, his disciples, amen, that were, amen, constantly plowing up their own heart full of the word, full of prayer, amen, doing the word, amen, being led by the spirit of God, amen, 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 not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, plowing the field, the world, and I was the world, amen, I was the world, glory to God, amen, before I came to know Christ, I was, you know, shacking, didn't think, you know, nothing, it was the norm, it was nothing, that I thought was taboo or whatever. It was just how it is. I'm just living with this man, which is my husband now. But I tell you, it seemed as if, you know, as the word was coming forth, it seemed like they were just picking on me. It did. It seemed like they were picking on me. But that's how that's how it always seemed. They weren't just picking on me, but it was because they were full of that word and being led by the spirit of God. And amen. 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 And allowed the spirit of God to move them. It caused my life to be forever changed. It caused me to make a decision. Who am I going to serve? Am I going to serve me? Or am I going to serve God? Amen. It turned my life upside down. Glory to God. Amen. 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 And we want to, we want that testimony. Amen. To be said of all of us. Amen. We want to be able to impact somebody's life. They said, Oh Lord, you know, when they came into my life, I didn't know anything about the word. You know, I didn't know anything about God, but their impact in my life turned my life upside down. It's what we're here to do as disciples as the body of Christ, as Christians, as believers, turn this world upside down. Amen. Why do we plow? Why do we plow? Why do we plow? It's because we want the seed of the word of God to be sown effectively. And it can't be sown effectively until that ground is plowed. Seed can't penetrate hard ground. It's why we do it. Seed can't penetrate hard ground. And listen to me. Listen to me. You know, it don't, it don't, you know, that seed of the word, it don't just change lives. It could change generations. It could change lineage. It could cause, listen, a bloodline that was bound by drugs, bound by addiction, bound by promiscuity, bound by uh, murder, molestation. You know, you name the sin, the seed of the word can cause not just that person's life to change, but shift the whole lineage, the whole bloodline to live a holy life, to live a righteous life, to live for God. And God forbid if, amen, amen, the responsibility that we have as disciples refuse to do the work and the seed of God's word that is meant to change a bloodline is sown. Ooh, Jesus. That's meant to change a bloodline is sown and it falls on hard ground. Lord Jesus. Lord, I repent. I repent, you know, for not plowing, you know, if, if if I were to plow, you know, if I had a job to plow in a certain area and I didn't, Lord, I repent. I repent. I repent. Jesus, we want to see, 
Amen. Someone's life changed. We want to we want to make a difference in somebody's life. Amen. Amen. We want amen the power of Christ. Amen. We want the demonstration of Christ in our lives. Amen. We want to be an example in this earth realm. We want to be light. We want to be salt, glory to God. Amen. We want Christ's power to be demonstrated. Amen. We want the seed of the word to take root. It should sadden us, vex us, anger us, stir us when we see that seed going forth on hard ground, when we see it going forth on stony ground, when we see it going forth forth on wayside ground. It should do something like, Lord, help me. You know, Lord, this our prayer should be, Lord, help me. What do I need to do to plow? You know, how do you want me to plow this ground? How do you want me to plow this field? Glory to God. Listen, go to 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, verse 2. The Bible says, this is what Paul told Timothy. That's 2 Timothy 4 and 2. Paul told Timothy, preach the word. Be in, be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Listen, the seed of the word is not restricted by seasons. Amen. The seed of the word is not restricted by seasons, but the, the field has to be plowed up first. The seed of the word is not restricted by season. If you look around, listen, I already said Christian TV, you can, you can turn on that TV and find somebody preaching and teaching about Christ. You can turn on a radio station and hear somebody preaching and teaching Christ. You can look on so many social media outlets and on YouTube like us, like other churches, and hear the word of God going forth. Listen, the word of God is going forth. The seed of God is going forth. It's being preached in season and out of season. Amen. Therefore, we as disciples should not be restricted by seasons. We shouldn't be restricted by seasons. We should not be, amen, amen, amen. Say, you know, I'm not going to get in the field, you know, right now. It's summertime. It's hot in the field. I'm not going to get in the field right now because it's wintertime. It's cold in the field. I don't mind plowing in the fall and in the spring. Amen. I don't mind plowing when I'm on a mountaintop, but when I'm going through the valley low, when I'm, you know, going through difficulties and, and facing afflictions, I'm not... I'm not willing to plow. Amen. Listen. Amen. Even right now it's COVID season. But just because COVID is in the land, it doesn't exempt us from our job. We should, it should cause us to plow even more. The lives that are being lost, Lord help. What field was I supposed to plow that that left this earth? What what field was I supposed to plow to get their heart ready to receive the word of God? Lord, help me. Help us, Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. We are to plow in any season. Amen. In any season. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter what's going on in this earth. Because COVID could be with us for 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 forever. We don't know. So does that mean we don't plow? We don't witness? No. No, 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 no. The Bible says that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Listen, we're not going to be fair weather Christians. We're not going to be seasonal disciples. Glory to God. Just like, you know, you know, the... Those that are called to preach the gospel are called in season and out of season. We are the same way as disciples. You may not have a title to your name, but you have a responsibility as a disciple to plow. Amen. Glory to God. So where do we plow? Where do we plow? Where do we plow? We know it's the field, but, you know, some people are, I'm not plowing over there. I'm not plowing in the hood. I'm not plowing in the rich neighborhood. No, we plow everywhere. And the thing is, and that's why we have to be led by the spirit of God. He's going to direct us right where to go. We're not plowing all, you know, just 
aimlessly. No, 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 no. He is going to give us direction. Amen. He is going to, amen, amen. Let us encounter the right people at the right time for the right word. We plow everywhere. We're not going to, amen, amen, discriminate or be timid or be scared or be shy to plow because someone is, you know, a millionaire or a billionaire or uh, the owner of the company. Amen. We're not going to be scared to to plow because, amen, they got a disease or they live in a shelter or they live under the bridge or they smell funny or they look different. We're not going to be afraid to plow. We're going to plow everywhere. Everywhere the spirit leads us, we are going to plow. Amen. 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 Our lives, our lives have to be a plow. Our lives have to be a plow. We got to plow and, and, and turn up and turn over, you know, thorny ground and wayside ground. Amen. Amen. And stony ground and, and hard, hard ground. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So hearts can be receptive to the seed of the word. Amen. 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 And we're not going to plow our opinions. Amen. I'm not going to plow my feelings. Amen. Amen. It's my witness of who God is and what God can do. That's what I'm plowing. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Because somebody's opinion is based upon what has happened in their life. And some tragic things have happened to a lot of people. You know, somebody has gotten raped and they refuse to think that, you know, a rapist is worthy of the kingdom or fit, can be fit for the kingdom. You know, but a soul is a soul to God. Amen. And that's why we can't plow our opinion. Amen. That's why we can't plow our feelings. You know, someone's been divorced and has left a bitter taste in their mouth and in their spirit and their soul. So, you know, when you come to the ground that's dealing with marital issues, you know, instead of you plowing that, what God put together, let no man put us under. You know, you're plowing, you know, if if you know like me, you better get somebody else. You better get somebody on the side, leave them, take them for everything they got. This is why we're not plowing our emotions. We're not plowing our feelings. We're not plowing our opinion. Amen. Glory to God. Like I said, amen. We are plowing our witness to who God is and what God can do. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. That, you know, that, you know, there's nothing too hard for God. That's what we're plowing. That, amen. That God is a healer because somebody has gotten news, devastating news from a doctor, from a physician, you know, that says that there is no hope. Glory to God. But we're plowing with God. All things are possible to him that believe. You know, someone's lost a loved one that, you know, may feel like, you know, I'm never going to be able to get over this. But. You know, we're going to plow that weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. It's a plowing. There's a plowing that God is calling us to do. Amen. And it's, it's so many things you can plow. So much word you can plow. Amen. And this is what we as disciples of God are called to do, to plow up that field, plow up that world, keep our, heart, our hearts forever turned over. Amen. Glory to God. And for those that are new to Christ, new converts, those that are young kids, you know, um, maybe you don't have a, a plethora or many scriptures that you can pull from that that you can plow somebody's field with or you don't have that that word written on your heart just yet because you're new, you're new. You're new to Christ. You're just now learning the things of God. You're just now starting to eat that word. So it hasn't been written just yet. It's coming. Amen. 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 But you can plow by impractical ways. 
Amen. By being kind. Amen. By helping, being a help to somebody, by being truthful. Amen. Your life can plow. Amen. The Bible says that we are written epistles. Glory to God. So somebody may not hear a scripture or you may not know a scripture. Somebody may not open their Bible, but they're going to read your life. And you as a, as a new convert or you as a, you know, uh, a, a, a kid being kind. And that's why he says that, you know, that good ground can produce some 30 fold, some 60 fold, some 100 fold. You produce at the level you that God, that your capacity can allow you to. And God will honor that. Glory to God. God will honor that. It's practical things, practical things we can do. Amen. So when the seed of the, the word is sown, amen, it'll take root. Amen. Somebody might say, oh, you know, that sister over there, she always, you know, that my coworker over there, she always keeps her, her desk all nice and tidy and clean. The Bible says that cleanliness is next to godliness. Listen, whatever we do, we do it as unto the Lord. And the Bible says when we lift him up, he draws and we don't know, and you know, what, what is the thing that draw? we know that it's when he's lifted up, he draws. We know that it's his word is draw. We can't come to him unless his spirit draws. We know these things, but we don't know exactly what drew us. Was it someone's kindness that, you know, made us say, hmm, let me listen to what this brother or the sister have to say. You know, is it because, you know, you treat the CEO with respect and the janitor with respect? When you when you do it as unto the Lord, it draws. It causes that that hard heartedness and, you know, those thorns and that stone in the heart and all of these things to be turned up. Those weeds and insects, it starts to, to start digging, start turning that earth over. Glory to God. Amen. 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 And you got to know this, that, you know, when you plow the field, sometimes it upsets people. Because sometimes people think we're too extreme, we're too narrow minded, we're too one sided. But that's why you got to always keep your eyes on Christ, because, amen, amen. When you keep your eyes on man, you know, you get off and people get upset when you start saying, well, I don't I don't have sex because I'm not married. You know. People feel like you you shooting shots, you shooting slugs. But you got to keep your eyes on Christ because, amen, plowing upsets people. Listen, plowing you, your own heart can, you know, upset you. It can, when that word comes to you, when it come down your street and knock on your door and, and sit on your couch, it, it upsets you. Pastor would say, you know, that word can make you, amen, fighting mad or happy glad. But God's purpose is to keep our heart prepared for the seed of that word, to keep it pliable. Amen. Amen. So, you know, you know, he will prune, he will cut, he will dig up, he will break. Amen. Because he wants us, amen, amen, to be better, to do better, to be Christ-like, to reflect his glory, to reflect his character. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. 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 So just know that a plow is going to upset, you know, a plow when it's used, it upsets the earth underneath it. But keep your eyes on Christ. Keep your eyes on Christ. Amen. 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 Putting a hand to the plow represents commitment. Amen. Amen. When you put your hand to the plow, it, it represents commitment. Glory to God. Amen. Meaning you engage yourself. Amen. Amen. It represents involvement, responsibility, and faithfulness to God. Amen. Have you put your hand to the plow? But find yourself looking back. Have you put your hands to the plow, but find yourself looking back? And, you know, looking back in this scripture means it's a continuous action. It's a constant looking back. Glory to God. Amen. Have you put your hand to the plow and find yourself looking back? Amen. What causes a person to look back? What causes a person to look back? Amen. What causes people to look back is because they heart. Is back there. The thing that they love, the thing that they enjoy is back there. Amen. It's still back there. And when you look at it, you look at the children of Israel. God brought them out of bondage. It brought them out of, amen, the 
the hard taskmaster hand of Pharaoh. They brought him, he brought him out of Egypt. Amen. 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 And delivered them. And in, in the making process, because they were in the desert, you know, and in the desert is where God is trying to get all that old mindset out of you, all those old ways out of you. Amen. And as he was trying to make them and show him that he is God, that he's the provider, amen, that he is love, that he's the deliverer, amen, amen. They began to say within themselves that we had it better over there in bondage. And we don't want that to be said of us, amen. We don't want for us to, you know, give our life to Christ, say for Christ I live, for Christ I die, and then start looking back, ooh, I did used to have fun at the bar. Oh, I did used to have fun, you know, uh, uh, sleeping around. Ooh, I did used to have a good time. Amen. 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 Doing all manners of sin. No, 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 no. No, we're not going to look back with the longing of our old life. Amen. The Bible says, you know, we are new creatures in Christ. Old things are passed away. All Behold, all things have become new. We, we don't look back to long. We don't look back to say, oh, I miss it. Oh, what a time I had when I was in sin, when I was, amen, going, amen, amen, at the course of this world, amen. I was headed for a life of destruction, a life of devastation, a life of hell. Hell was was my destination. Amen. Look at look look with me in Proverbs, the fourth chapter, verse 25 through 27. It says, let thine eyes look right. Yeah, let thy eyes look. Hold on, I can't see. Let me get my, I'm sorry. Let me get, I can't see it. It's Proverbs, the fourth chapter, verse 25. And it says, let thy eyes look right on, amen. And let thy eyelids look straight before thee. It says, ponder the path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. We're not look. That's why I say you got to keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. We purposing. Hey, we plowing in purpose in 2021. We're going to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. We're not going to look to the left. We're not going to look to the right. We're not going to, amen, turn around. Somebody said one time, I was talking a couple days ago, and they said, sometimes I just glance to the left. And I glance to the right. And sometimes you have that um, that unction to look. If you if you're doing what God calls you to do, you know, sometimes it's not even just looking back and longing, but it's looking back, seeing what other people are doing. Don't even look. You look to Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Glory to God. Amen. Because we can't plow straight looking back. Amen. Our commitments is either total or none at all. It's not acceptable. We we can't just put our hand to the plow and look back. And the thing is, God want our, our whole heart. God want all of us. Glory to God. Amen. God doesn't want us just going to church and then we wishing we were at home. God doesn't want us, amen, attending our Zoom service and we watching, you know, dancing with the stars in the background and, and doing all manners of things. Even with our, our spouses, we want full attention. With our children, we want full attention. You know, you tell you, you're talking to your kid and they over there scribble scrabbling. No, you check them real quick. Pay attention to what I'm telling you. You want their full, the full of them to be totally committed. And this is what God is saying to us. He wants all of us. Amen. Amen. He said, if you look back, you're not fit for the kingdom. Amen. It's a statement of judgment. If you look back, you're not fit for the kingdom. Amen. Amen. The issue is not only how we serve effectively. Because some of us can serve effectively. Some of our hands are to the plow. Amen. But it's also a matter of salvation. Our heart belongs to God. He is our first love. We can't, we can't be doing all this service, all the service. I don't know what your, your body, your body does, what your uh, church does. We do a lot at our church, but God doesn't want us just doing a lot and wishing we, our heart was somewhere else.
He wants our whole heart. He wants a total commitment. Amen. Amen. He wants us to be fit. Amen. To be usable. Amen. To be suitable. Amen. Glory to God. The Bible talks about, you know, the salt has lost its savor. We don't want to be like that. Because it said the, the only thing when salt has lost its savor, the only purpose it has is to be trodden upon under people's feet. The Bible talks about the, the, the field that when it yields good herbs, God blesses it. But when it, when it yields herbs that are, that are not good, they burn the field. Amen. Glory to God. We don't want to say, you know, today I live for him and tomorrow I'm not. Amen. Glory to God. We don't want to turn our backs on our faith. Glory to God. We don't want to look back and say, you know, a life of sin is better than a life of Christ. Glory to God. Amen. Something else that caused people to look back is persecution. Amen. Serving the Lord. And we got to understand this. Serving the Lord. We got to expect persecution. Listen, persecution is going to come. They persecuted Christ. But it shouldn't cause us to look back. Amen. When you look at 1 Thessalonians 1, 4 through 5, it says, So that we ourselves glory in you, in the churches of God, for your patience and your faith and all of your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure, which is manifest which is a manifest token of righteous judgment of God, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which ye also suffer. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. We don't get heaven just because uh, we went through some things. No, no, no. I'm not saying we, it's not we get heaven because of merit. Amen. Amen. But it's when we show our steadfastness in the midst of affliction, it demonstrates that, you know, we have that character of God. Amen. That God promised salvation to. Amen. When we suffer and we, when we endure, amen, we, we, uh, not just suffer, but suffer and endure it says, you know, endure hardness as a good soldier. Amen. But when we suffer and endure, we prove that, you know, we're men and women of God that are worthy to dwell in heaven. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. What kind of person is fit for the kingdom? Amen. A disciple that's totally committed. Amen. That puts his hand to the plow and never looks back to his old life. Amen. I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray that you would meditate on God's word. You pray God's word. You would study God's word. Amen. That you will plow in purpose and on purpose. Plow up your own heart. Keep it. Keep the ground of your heart forever uh, turned over. Keep it. It's your responsibility to keep it turned over. And it's also your responsibility, our responsibility to plow the field, which is the world. Don't let 2020 be said that you did not witness to anybody, that you didn't plow a field, that your lines were crooked because your focus got off of Christ. No, we're going to purpose to keep our eyes on Christ. We are going to purpose to keep our hearts ready for the seed of the word. We are going to purpose, glory to God, amen, to impact this world. Amen. I pray that you got a word, a thought, amen, out of this Sunday school lesson. Amen. Amen. If you would like to give an offering to our, our church, amen, amen, you can, amen, give at our cash app. It's dollar sign FTC Houston. Amen. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our video. Glory to God. We just thank you for joining us and stay tuned for the next word. Amen. Of God. Thank you.